All right, fantastic. So welcome to Coffee with Marcus. This is episode 154. And today I want to give you an update on my $500,000 account, because as you know, the month is over. Today is April 5th. So how did I end up? And uh, am I achieving my goal of trading for a living? Can I really trade for a living or am I just saying this here on the YouTube channel? Anyhow, that's what we're going to talk about. So let's get started. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the market. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises, and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then click on like right now and let's get started. All right, fantastic. So in today's show, as promised, I'll give an update on my $500,000 account. And let's just quickly recap of what I'm doing here. So this, if this is your first time, this way you know what exactly I'm talking about. So on January 11th, I opened uh, an account with $250,000 in cash uh, and I opened a margin account, which gives me $500,000 in margin. And my goal is to trade for a living, make $15,000 per month. And that was actually an estimate to see, uh, okay, how much are my living expenses? And today I'm going to show you exactly how much my living expenses are, because I was looking into this to make sure that I can really trade for a living. So. Uh, as you can see, the idea here is to make uh, $180,000 per year. Now, another goal for me is to make SRC profits. And what does this SRC profit stand for? It stands for systematic, uh, repeatable, <clears throat> and also consistent. Because uh, when you're trading for a living, you want to make sure that you can actually take money out of the account every single month. So um, again, I started trading, started, oops, didn't want to make this in all caps. Started trading uh, this account on January 11th. And here's what happened thus far. So if you have missed the previous updates, let me give you a very brief update. Uh, so here, I just want to show you how much I wired out thus far. So this here is my account statement. My account is currently with Tastyworks. Uh, I'm about to change brokers and I'll tell you more about this very, very soon, uh, probably in the next episode. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that first of all, I give you an update on the account. So, and as you can see uh, on two one, I withdrew uh, the profits for January and the profits for January were 21,281. Um, let me actually, let's actually write this down here. So this way, <clears throat> you know exactly of what has been happening. So in January, uh, 2021, so we had profits of 21,821 that uh, I transferred out of the account into my checking account in February 2021. Uh, let's see what happened there. This is when uh, 26,408. So let's go back there. So this was uh, 26,408. And now for March 2021, we want to see what happened there. So uh, let's first jump right into the account and take a look at the positions that I'm in right now. And uh, I'm in Apple. Apple is doing reasonably well today. Uh, I'm in Etsy. That's a trade that I enter today. GDXJ and Ride. But let's just see where we stand year to date. So year to date, uh, I'm up $64,481. Now I do have a negative open PL. So these are the trades. We'll talk about these. These are the trades that are currently open. And as you can see, these, these smaller ones, they don't bother me. I mean, they're not really a problem. The ride trade is really an ugly trade. And I'm flying a rescue mission here right now, as you know, and I talked about it in a different video. So um, take a look at this. I'll link to the other uh, video in the description and we can talk about it a little bit later. So but this is where going back to what happened here in uh, March. So I'm looking at all my transactions from March 1st to uh, to April 1st, and you see it is $16,792. So uh, for March, we are at 16,700. What did I just say? Already forgot. $92. Okay. So that is here a grand total. If you're tallying all of this up. So the total here overall is go back to year to date, 
64,481. So 64,481. So far, so good. So as you can see, uh, this morning I wired $16,792 uh, from my trading account into my checking account. So um, before we talk about uh, whether this is really trade for a living and what I do with this open PL and what's happening there, um, let's actually talk about the strategies and the tools that I use in order to do this. So the strategies, I personally trade two different strategies. So let's move on. How do I trade for a living? Okay. And uh, if you have been following me at all on this channel, then you know that there's three things that you need. Number one, you need to have profitable trading strategies, right? I mean, without a trading strategy, it's really difficult to generate these, what you see here, SRC profits, the systematically repeatable and consistent. I mean, without a strategy, you, you probably make some nice gains, but then can you do it again the next month? And you see, when you trade for a living like me, you have to make sure that you make money every single month. And uh, also going back here, you see that uh, March didn't go as well as January and February because I have two dots in my account. Uh, so I have Apple uh, and I also have uh, Ride that are not earning any money. But my goal was to make $15,000 per month and I even achieved it in March, even though I underperformed in March compared to January and February. But uh, you see, this is why it's important to have this SRC profits. Anyhow, so pillar number one is proven strategies. Number two, you need to have the right tools. And we'll talk about the tool in a moment. And number three is that you absolutely need to have the right mindset. So let's jump back here to this. Uh, by the way, if you would like to have a copy of these notes, uh, I'll, I'll link to uh, a link in the description, link to a link in the description. Anyhow, rockwelltrading.com slash app. This is where you can get the notes if you're interested in those notes at all, which you might or might not be. Uh, anyhow, so how do I trade for the living? The trading strategies that I use is, first of all, the wheel. This is where I sell premium. And honestly, this is the strategy that I've been using for most of the year. Uh, so the other trading strategy that I trade, let's just go back here, is uh, the Power X strategy. Now, according to the Power X strategy, thus far for this year, I've only taken two, three trades. I, I took one more trade today. So it's not really a big emphasis right now. This week we are trading with our mastermind. So live trading and there was a trade this morning that looked good. Actually, I, I entered the the signal. So I'm not yet filled on this trade. So I just have an order. So two trades thus far. So but let's uh, stay focused here on the wheel strategy. Now the wheel strategy is a, is a very simple strategy. So in a nutshell, uh, you sell puts and uh, collect premium and then, uh, oops, there we go. Ah, you might or might not get assigned. And uh, if you are assigned, you sell calls and collect premium, right? So this is what I'm doing. And uh, I, I know that right now, this is just a very quick overview and I want to mainly focus on giving an update on the account. So if you're interested in learning more about the wheel, uh, I'll link to it in the description. So there's a playlist that explains to you exactly of what all of this is all about. Also, I'll link to, uh, to another video in the playlist uh, about the previous account updates. Anyhow, so uh, PowerX strategy, haven't been trading it a lot, plan to trade it way more in this quarter. So in the first quarter, I don't think the market conditions were right for this strategy. In the second quarter, based on what I see, I believe that the market conditions are improving for the PowerX strategy. So uh, let's talk about, uh, before I look into the trades, the tools that I use. And in terms of the tools, it's really just one. And the tool that I like to use is the PowerX optimizer. And uh, this is how I'm finding the trade. So what the PowerX Optimizer does for me, it uh, finds, finds the best trades for me, according to both strategy, whether you're trading uh, the PowerX strategy or you're trading the wheel strategy, and then uh, tells me what to do. So let me just show you exactly what this looks like. And then we take a look at the individual trades. And I know that uh, you have uh, a lot of questions here and I will answer these questions towards the end of the video here. So let me just run through this really quick uh, so that you have an overview. 
and then we get into there. So let me bring up my handy dandy iPad. Here we go. <laughs> this is the iPad. It needs to be tethered to the computer. Super annoying, but uh, this is how this software works. In order for you to have a great experience, it needs to be tethered instead of going wireless. Anyhow, so um, let me just uh, switch over to the iPad here. And uh, so the software, the PowerX Optimizer, oops, there we go, actually has scanners built in that show me what exactly um, I need to trade. And uh, I want to show you a preview here of the latest version of the PowerX Optimizer uh, that we have here right now and the trade that I took this morning. So uh, the trade popped up here on a scanner and now my magic pen is not working. I'm putting it on the iPad so that it should pair. It doesn't do it. Okay, we will be just fine. So in the upper right hand corner, you see the scanner and then you see that I have the calculator how I found Etsy this morning. So this is a trade that I <clears throat> that I looked at and uh, let me just show you here what this trade looks like that I did. I'm going back to the desktop. So uh, here I sold a put uh, with a strike price of 182.50. And uh, so I want to see if Etsy stayed, uh, stays above this 182.50. And uh, if it does by Friday, then I just keep the whole premium. And uh, the, the total premium uh, that I received here was uh, around $600. Uh, let's actually take a look at this really quick so that we see how much we got. So Etsy, I uh, traded it for 95 cents with five contracts there. So it's uh, like $475, right? And this would be uh, for, for this week. Now, uh, if, we, if we break it down, actually, so let's uh, go back here. So if we want to make $15,000 per month, uh, this is around uh, $3,750 $3, per week, right? Uh, so this gives you an idea and I want to make this on five positions overall and this is uh, on five positions. So the idea here is that I'm making around uh, what $700 per week per position. So this is the goal here just to give you an idea. And again, uh, right now I'm looking for, for Etsy to stay above 182.50 by Friday and Friday is April 9th. So let me just mark this here. This way you see exactly and this is something that uh, popped up here on the scanner. Uh, so let me just bring it up here. Let me just refresh this really quick. This way you see what the scanner looks like and this is the, the version 2.0. We're going to release this uh, hopefully later this week uh, or maybe next week. So it popped up here on the conservative scanner and uh, this is how I just saw okay uh, making $475. So that's not bad at all. Uh, this is if we are choosing April 9th here, 38% uh, for the year. Anyhow, so then also this morning I sold GDXJ. I don't know why I said GPRE. It was this morning was early. <laughs> I had two trades with a G that started uh, that started with a G. And this is why um, I don't know. I got confused here. So for GDXJ this morning, I sold um, a 48 call. And here's why. I currently own GDXJ shares and I own uh, 20 hundred shares and uh, these 20 hundred shares got assigned at $48. So on the shares, as you can see right now, I'm losing some money. So this is why I sold calls against it also with a strike of uh, 48 and I collected 35 cents. So on this one here, um, collected 35 cents and this would be expiring on April 9th. So as you can see, this is $735. So here I'm getting much closer to my $700 per position that I want to make. So with Etsy, not quite there yet, uh, but we'll see. This could be a really short trade and I might be able to exit it tomorrow or the day after. So um, then I also looked at Ride to see if I can do anything else, if I can sell some calls. And again, Ride is the trade where I am in trouble. Uh, so Ride, we have talked about it over and over. It's a trade where I got assigned at 2150. So right up here, and as you can see right now, Ride is at 1155. So that's not good at all. It's, it's trading at half at where I got assigned. So this is why I actually sold more puts at a strike price of 13 
So I got assigned there and this is how I was able to bring my break even down to $17.90. Now, as you can see, $17.90 is still ways away from where the prices are right now. But this is why I wanted checking today if I can actually sell more puts. And currently I'm interested, uh, if you can see this here on the screen, I'm interested in selling puts with a strike price of 10. Let me just move this over here. Uh, this would then allow me to lower my cost basis to a point where I just need a really quick pop. And uh, then, so the idea for me is here to, to lower my cost basis to get closer to probably $15 so that Ride can just do a quick pop and then is getting there. Okay, but uh, uh, we're getting completely off topic here right now. We we'll, we'll can talk more about this. So the, the question here is because this is where I want to make sure how do I trade for a living? And now the, the key question is, which I think is, is fair to ask, do I really trade for a living or do I need some other income? And this is where I uh, actually went through my account and I'm using a software called Mint that actually shows me how much I am spending. And uh, here is where you see my spending expenses in January, February, and March. And as you can see, uh, this is what I thought that I would spend around $10,000 to $12,000 per month. And um, <laughs> I really thought, okay, we are in line there. And then I noticed, oh my gosh, in March, I spent uh, $21,000. So that's quite a lot. So let's go back here. Okay, so when I set this goal to make $15,000 is uh, my assumption was that I spent around um, ten to $12,000 per month in living expenses. And uh, I just started tracking this because again, this was just a, a rough estimate here. Uh, but by the way, uh, before we move on, is this helpful at all? Uh, I mean, are you enjoying this video? Because if you do, do me a favor and click on like really quick. This way I see, because this is what my monitor shows me, the, the likes. Uh, if this is interesting to you at all, if you would like to see how a professional trader is making money, or uh, if you to talk about something else and we can do this. Is it okay if I, if I go on? Just click on like really quick. Okay, see a bunch of likes flying in there. Okay, good, cool. So um, this is my assumption and it seems that for uh, January and February, I, I did quite well, but then in March, I went completely over budget. And so I wanted to see what happened in March. And again, this is where this tool, it's a free tool, by the way, it's called mint.com. Uh, made it a little bit easier and I see, oh my gosh, in March, yes, I remember I did buy quite a few things for home improvement and I <laughs> forgot about this. <laughs> so this is where uh, I spent $5,800 on home improvement. And uh, by this means, I mean that I, I spend uh, some, uh, some money on furniture. And so anyhow, $5,800. I don't know if you ever uh, went furniture shopping. I mean, it goes quick like this. Anyhow. Uh, so this was a little bit unusual. Uh, then I also dug deeper and I thought, so, oh, my car insurance was due and they're taking it automatically out of my account. And uh, so this way it was $3,300. And I know that this might sound a lot, but I also have a lot of cars. So the cars that I have is I, I have a Tesla Model S, I love, love, love it. Uh, then I have a truck, which my son Julius is driving uh, mainly and my daughter Vivian, they both love the truck and it's great for hauling boats. As you know, both my kids are sailors. Uh, so then there, there's another expedition, uh, which is also great for hauling stuff. I have a little fun car and this fun car is a Toyota Spyda. Uh, so it's an MR2. It's, it's a little uh, two seater sports car, super, super fun uh, to ride. And then of course I have uh, at least one teenage kid right now on my insurance and I need to add a second one. And this is why it jumped up uh, to uh, actually quite a lot. So $3,300 in car insurance. And uh, then I also realized, oh, okay, uh, so I had uh, $1,500 for a new iPad because um, I told you that I was uh, spending money on a new iPad. So if we, if we take all this, I wasn't too surprised that in March my, my expenses uh, ran a little bit out of control. So if we take the uh, $1,500 for the iPad plus $3,300 uh, 
uh, for the car insurance plus uh, what was it fifty eight hundred dollars that I spent here on uh, on home improvement uh, you see it's ten thousand six hundred dollars so I'm not too surprised that uh, I ran a little bit out of budget here but you see the the point is when you when you trade for a living right I, you, you gotta account for these expenses because even though right now I, I mean probably next month I will not have or this month in April I will not have all these expenses because I'm not buying new furniture uh, every uh, every month and I'm not paying thirty three hundred dollars in car insurance I believe that this is is this for a year no I don't think I, I think as sad as it is this might actually be only for six months <laughs> it's, it's crazy when you add a teenager to your car insurance uh, it, it's crazy okay anyhow so um, what was I yeah but, but this way you see you've got to account for this and uh, this is where we see in the first three months I spent forty four thousand dollars and uh, this means that I was absolutely um, here we go back so uh, I spent forty four thousand dollars in the first three months even with these unexpected or unusual expenses but they are part of living right I mean at least I define living as being able to afford a new furniture whenever I want to um, so anyhow, therefore, I think I'm doing pretty well with my $15,000. So thus far in the first three months, I spent $44,000. And uh, as I said a little bit earlier, I brought in $64,000. So uh, let's see. This was my assumption. So uh, real expenses, real expenses. And uh, actually, I can I can probably copy this in here. Um, so let me do this because again if you're interested in the notes I'll be happy to give you the notes so real expenses are geez is this big can probably make this smaller for the notes there we go forty four thousand dollars and uh, again through trading I made sixty four thousand dollars so so far so good okay so um, is, this, is this helpful? And uh, I, I see a few comments here that say it is helpful. Let me actually dive in because I appreciate you being here live. And uh, if you're watching the recording, make sure that you catch me next time live. I'm going live uh, now. I decided to go live twice a week and this will be Monday and Thursday. So I, I used to do it three times a week and I thought you might be getting sick and tired of me, right? I, are you already sick and tired of me? So this is why I thought, you know what? Twice a week is probably good, Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, this way we can still meet and hang out and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay. Good, good, good. So um, Tony says, uh, I'm having trouble not knowing how to end up in a margin call when using the option wheel strategy in a margin account. Can you explain how not to? Yes, absolutely. I did a full video on this and this is trading on margin. I'll link to it in the description. Super important that you watch this. So it is important that you only trade cash secured puts. So don't over trade it. For me, what this means is uh, if I'm jumping back here, see when I'm using my tool, I'm actually entering up here my buying power and my buying power is 500,000 and I enter the maximum amount of positions and then it tells me exactly how many contracts to buy. So this is why this morning I only bought five Etsy options and uh, I mean if you, if you just look at this so uh, let me just show you um, or actually sold for Etsy options. So if I'm selling the uh, 182.50 let's actually go to Etsy. So here's the deal, right? I mean, I, I have plenty of buying power. And if you go to Etsy and uh, I just want to right now use the example of uh, selling um, one put option for $180. You see, uh, the buying power required is only $2,000, right? So it's only $2,000 and I still right now, even though I'm in four positions, I, I still have 100,000 left. So I could say, oh my gosh, let's trade 10 or 20 or 50 right but but this way I would be over trading the account so we don't want to do that so it is absolutely important Tony that you use the calculator plug in your buying power and then based on what the calculator tells you don't over trade this don't over trade it right so this is how I'm controlling my positions and I'm how I'm making sure that I'm not getting assigned uh, that I'm not getting a margin call I'm getting assigned that is fine okay Good, good, good. All right. So there is somebody from Somalia. So good to see you. Okay, CR, greetings from Ireland. Good to see everybody. Okay, Darkman, 
uh, X2G says, like an addict, didn't have coffee with Marcus on Friday. Yeah, Friday was good Friday. Hoped that you enjoyed uh, the long weekend. And I'm putting even more withdrawals on it by going live twice a week. But there's so many videos on the YouTube channel. There's more than 700 videos, so feel free uh, to catch up here. Oh my gosh, there's Ingo, Ingo from Germany. So good to see you here. Uh, good, let's see. Um, Yoshi and Austin here. Uh, you put 20% of your buying power in a stock. Isn't it better to diversify it more to reduce the risk? You see, for me personally, I feel that I'm well diversified with five different positions. Um, if I want to fill 10 positions, for me personally, I would be over trading. But uh, Yoshi, um, what, what, whatever your plan is, right? I mean, you got to follow your plan, right? This is why I have a mug uh, that says follow your plan. My plan is to have up to five positions. If you feel that you're not diversified enough, uh, feel free to just uh, yeah increase it to 10. For me personally, it will be difficult to find that many trade uh, trades. Okay, good. Helena, it's so good to see you here. Angela, yes, it was a nice three-day weekend. Douglas! Long time lurker, first live session. So good to see you here. Okay, so John is asking, when collecting my premiums for options I've been assigned, I sometimes get a higher dollar amount if I go one month, out, one month, one month out. What are your thoughts on this? Um, this is actually, John, a really great question. Uh, and I did a video on this. It has something to do with the time uh, decay and the premium. And it's called Theta. I'll link to it in the description. You're going to love it. Take a look at this uh, because the more time you have, right, and it's all about premium per day, this is why you get a higher premium when you go further out. Now, I personally like to go only one to two weeks out. And this is what my calculator shows me. So when, when I'm going on the calculator here, and uh, for example, if I'm looking here at overstock, uh, you'll see that it only shows me expirations of this Friday uh, and the next Friday, and this here, April 16th. Uh, let's see if we have something else um, that we can take a look at where we might see uh, this also April 16th. Let me just go walk over here to the aggressive to see if maybe True, it's also April 16th. Yeah, right now it seems that uh, here for Etsy, we have a few April 9th and April 16th. So, um, John, I, I just like to look one to two weeks out. I feel that I have more control this way. Anyhow, good, good, good. All right. Christina, so good to see you here. All right, let's see what other questions we have. There we go. Okay, so Richard says, a uh, really fair question. When the market drops 30% in a month and you're in the middle of selling calls or puts, do you handle the situation differently than when an individual stock drops? Well, you see, it depends because if the market drops, it does not necessarily mean that my stock drops and the other way around. I mean, if the market is doing well, and if you just take a look at the overall market and uh, uh, we look here at, for example, the SPX, then you see the S&P 500 is making new all-time highs. However, one of the positions that I have in my portfolio, right, plummeted by 50%, right? So this is where uh, you need to um, manage these uh, positions individually. Because even though the market, the whole market drops, see this where, for example, I believe that GDXJ might go up if the overall market drops, right? Because GDXJ is an index of the gold miners. And if the market plummets, most probably gold will be more in demand and it will shoot up. So this is what we saw. Um, I just see, let's uh, let me zoom out here and uh, let's actually go back. See this is why I am in GDXJ. And as you can see here, um, as the overall market was still going down, this is when GDXJ was just soaring to new highs because gold was considered here a safe haven. I mean, right now it might be that it is more cryptocurrencies anyhow. So let me just zoom in here a little bit because that's right now a trade that I'm in. I bought uh, the stock at 48. I, I've been doing really, really well on GDXJ. I mean, GDXJ is one of the positions let me just show you where I made, uh, what, $19,000. So out of the $64,000, $19,000 come from GDXJ. So this has been a really, really good position. Okay. Good, good, good. So uh, let's see. David is only here to buy the handy dandy calculator, which I can't buy in the shops. <laughs> Exclusively here on this channel, the handy dandy calculator, together with the handy dandy iPad and a handy dandy notepad. All this right here. Okay, 
Good, good, good. All right. So, Jim, absolutely. So good to see you here. A close behind you, close last Thursday with $59,000 income profit for the year. And I know, Jim, that you're also uh, trading this strategy, the wheel, and uh, you also use the tool, right? Uh, do you trade anything else outside of the tool or do you use PowerX Optimizer to find all the trades? Just let me know in the comments. I'm just curious here. Okay, Anthony says, wonder which Etsy trade he took. Uh, the 182, let me just come back there. So just in case that you missed it earlier, the 182.50 expiring this Friday. So only uh, four days left on the clock here. Okay, good, good, good. <clears throat> uh, Webby, 64,000. What a shame that there's a hefty tax bill that has to be paid. Yeah, last year I paid a little bit over $300,000 in taxes. Now, uh, again, you, you will not pay $300,000. That's a beautiful thing about taxes. You only pay them if you're profitable, if you're making money. So that's good. Okay, Nicole is uh, actually posting here where the show notes are available. So if you're interested in the notes here, uh, go to rockwelltrading.com slash app. Okay, so Timothy, I'm just wondering when the wheel strategy book will be available. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's laying right there. It's laying right there. Uh, let me just see. I can't grab it. Ugh, it's too far away. Uh, I believe, I believe we have planned to release it on April twelfth. So it's coming up super super soon, April twelfth or April nineteenth. Nicole, um, can you post in in my Skype chat really quick for when have we planned to release the book? So it's coming very 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 soon. I uh, just want to make sure that I'm taking a quick look at there. But uh, yeah, it's coming up here. So I'll let, you, I'll let you know in a moment. Nicole will let me know. My team knows all of this better than I do, which is good. Uh, so Ron says, number four, you need money. Yes, you do need money to make money. I mean, this is it's true. Kind of sucks, but yeah. Uh, so yes, so you need a strategy. You need the right tools. You need the right mindset. And you do need money. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, so... Kenov says, uh, sell puts at what entry trigger? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, this is where, you see, I'm I'm always looking here what uh, PowerX Optimizer tells me. So you see here, for example, for Etsy, it tells me that for different strike prices and different expirations, right, I need, here's the premium that I can get. And this here is the analyzed uh, annual return. So you see, I can get anywhere between 31 and 51% annualized, right? Uh, if I'm selling these strike prices at this premium. I, I explained this in another video. I think I'll link to it in the description here. Okay. So uh, let's see. Bob Laws from Greece. So good to see you. That's awesome. Okay. So Giacomo says, when you do a rest commission, how do you calculate the amount of shares to buy in the second, third, and uh, et cetera, and so on trades? Do you buy more, same, or less shares? Uh, I actually do less. And I... I did a video on how to fly the rescue mission and I explained exactly of what I did. So as an example, let me just go back here to ride. So originally on ride, uh, let me bring up here. So I sold 47 options right here. And then I sold 23 at the 13 price. And I sold 30 at the 10 price. And I explained exactly my logic and my reasoning behind this. Uh, in this video, it's called how to fly rescue missions. Uh, or my rescue mission on right or something like this. I'll link to it in the description. This way you can find it easily. Okay. So uh, Gennaf says, uh, we, I have two books. So this book covers the PowerX strategy and the one that is about to be released very, very soon uh, will cover the wheel. So it's two books. You can get the book here for $4.95 on our website or 25 bucks on Amazon, up to you. Uh, if you want to get it for $4.95, I'll link to it in the description. And uh, as soon as the wheel book is available, I'll do this too. And right now we have a waiting list. So if you go to rockwelltrading.com slash wheel uh, you can go on the early bird list. This way I'll let you know first when the book is available here. Okay, Gandalf, does this help? Okay. So, all right, Frank says, when are you going to share the new brokerage account? This morning I reviewed the final videos. They're being uploaded right now. I hope that I can do it uh, probably tomorrow or on Wednesday. We'll see because I'm also very, very excited, as you can see, about the new version of the PowerX Optimizer. So I'm working with the development team here every single day and it starts to look good, good, good. So I'm super excited about this. Um, and you have both incorporated here then the PowerX strategy 
uh, as well as the wheel strategy. And uh, by the way, this is a trade that I looked at this morning, uh, GPRE, and uh, for me, it has not triggered yet. So I wanted to get in at 31.31. And uh, let me just see, no, I don't have it in, in this account here. So let's not confuse you. So again, I, I've not been trading a lot of the PowerX strategy. Uh, I'm planning to trade it uh, way more in this quarter. And when I do, I will set up a dedicated account for this and give you an update in the same way as I'm doing it right now for the wheel. So I will set up a dedicated account and probably a much, much smaller account because many of you have asked, hey, uh, how do I trade a $5,000 or $10,000 account? So I'm, I'm thinking about setting up a much smaller account and start growing this uh, because not everybody's in the position to set up a $250,000 account or $100,000 account. So I want to show you how to grow a small account. And this is where I'll set it up uh, with a new broker probably sometime later this week. And then uh, as soon as I start trading uh, this, I'll, I'll let you know. By the way, uh, if you want to know whenever I go live or release a new video, click on subscribe. Hit the little notification bell. This way you get notified whenever I release a new video. Yep. Uh, okay. So uh, Zia says, I'm more than 54,000 unrealized loss and I have to pay $25,000 in income taxes. You are doing something wrong, uh, Zia. So you need to have a much better accountant uh, that knows uh, if you qualify uh, as a trader, right? And there's something like, uh, some call it the trader tax status. Yeah, or uh, you need to make sure that you qualify as a, a trader in securities, TIS, trader in securities. And there are certain criteria uh, that you need to meet and uh, then this way you can apply for mark to market and avoid this wash sale. And this is probably where you got caught in right now. So you need a much, 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 much better accountant. <laughs> okay, this will help you here. Okay, Jim got into um, 182.50. Yeah, good, because I mean, you have the tool. So you see the same that I'm seeing here. That is great. Hunter Bear up 25% in nine weeks. <sighs> Flex, yes, you're absolutely right. This is awesome, awesome. Edgar says, I'm not trading for a living yet, but I was on April. Uh, I would have gone hungry from a March loss. First down month in over a year. Well, let me know how I can help, Edgar, how I can help. Uh, Wazir says, when will the new version be released? We are shooting for later this week, uh, but again, right now we're still fixing bugs. I'm getting a new version every single day. Uh, if I cannot release it on Thursday, because I want to be able to support you, then I'll release it next week. I don't want to release something on Friday and then you're sitting there all weekend and you run into bugs, which is frustrating and you can report it all day long and the development team will probably working, will be working on the weekend. They have been for the past four or five weeks. They've worked uh, seven days a week, so they might want to break. So uh, it's either late this week or early next week. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so I thought sign of assignment was low. Don't know what you mean with sign of assignment. Assignment is good. Assignment is good. I mean, this is how I made. If you, if you look at the account here, if you go back to this, and if I sort all my profits uh, by realized, see, I was assigned in GDXJ. I am still in GDXJ, $19,000 in profits. I was assigned in WIN, $8,000 in profits. I was assigned in RIDE, $6,000 in profits. I was assigned in Uber. Uh, HAL, I'm not quite sure if I was assigned or not. And then Apple. And if you look at this, those that I was assigned achieved for $44,000 out of the uh, uh, $64,000. Need another sip of coffee here. So anyhow, um, yeah, so this way assignment is good. Don't be afraid of assignment. Assignment is good. Anyhow. Um, are you still enjoying the video? If you do, do me a favor, click on like, click on like, and I'll go through a few more questions. Okay. So Ali says, are you still have a $500,000 buying power after wiring out uh, the 16K for March? Um, yes, probably. So here's the deal. Um, this account qualifies for portfolio margin. So this is why the stock buying power here is uh, displayed in a very weird way. And you see right now I'm using up um, 20,000, 12,000, 28,000, 24,000. So this is the buying power that I'm using up in the existing positions. And then I still have 104,000 left. So it's probably a little bit reduced, but I'm, I'm, I'm still okay with it. <coughs> Excuse me. 
There we go. Okay. Let's go back. So Nathan says, sorry if you answered this before, but you use your premiums from calls and puts to lower your cost basis. Uh, you see, when I'm flying a rescue mission, yes. For right, yes. At this point, right, I'll be happy if I get out of this at break even or maybe with a small loss. I mean, losses are part of our business as traders. We cannot avoid losses. It's going to happen, right? So uh, this way, uh, we'll see. And this is why I'm willing to give up my premium there. I mean, we never know. Right might actually uh, pop. And if it pops to 14, 15, 16, I might get out with a small loss. We shall see. I'll keep you posted here. I'll keep you posted, Nathan. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, yeah, Lorena is helping uh, Gandalf. Um, can learn how to pick stocks for the wheel trade. Get them from the wheel scanner or the book that is coming out very, very soon. Okay, good. Um, so Zia says, most of the stocks PowerX wheel strategy spits out are undesirable ones. Maybe for you, right? I mean, this is where it comes in. What do you like? We had this discussion this morning. So uh, somebody in our mastermind, I can't remember. Oh, it was about Lyft. It was about Lyft versus Uber. And uh, Raza actually said that uh, he likes to own Lyft. So uh, for me, I think that Uber is a stronger company. And this is where rule number one, rule number one is you must be willing to own the stock. And if you are not willing to own the stock, then hey, no worries. Yeah, then uh, just wait until the perfect one pops up. So today, maybe 10, 15 popped up and I really liked Etsy the best. Good, good, good. Um, so MR Expo uh, 35 said, what is the name of the budget budget side uh, or program again? Let me show you. It is actually called Mint, M-I-N-T dot com. Uh, they have been bought by um, Intuit, who also makes QuickBooks. And uh, so it's sponsored now by Intuit and it's absolutely free. It's absolutely free and it's pretty cool. I like it. So M-I-N-T dot com, Mint dot com. OK, cool. So Justin says, uh, do you budget your annual income and trade a year in advance for living expenses or are they month to month? You see, this is where I, I said it in the beginning of the year. I need to get much better about tracking uh, my expenses. I'm not doing a good job. This is why I signed up for Mint and I've been doing it for the past two months. And this is why I could give you here my exact breakdown of where I stand month over month. And now I need to dig deeper and say, OK, my living expense of ten to eleven thousand dollars. What do they consist of? What are the categories where I'm spending the most? Because honestly, uh, at this point in my life, fortunately, I don't have to worry. Is there enough money in the account? Because there always is. I, I like to keep a, a certain amount in my checking account. If uh, it drops below a certain amount, and uh, for me, the magic number here is $150,000. And trust me, this was way different years ago. Uh, but it drops below this. I'm getting a little bit nervous because uh, I want to make sure that none of my cards bounces at the store when I buy something, right? Anyhow, different story. Hope that helps. Okay. So Ron says, I don't spend that much in two years. You see, Ron, this is fantastic uh, because this way you need a much, much smaller account. So this way you probably don't need a $250,000 account. Maybe a $100,000 account will allow you to trade for a living. And this is my, the purpose here of this channel to show you real money, to show you real trades, to, to just make sure uh, that you see it is possible to trade for a living. And again, I absolutely agree. Your living expenses might be way different than my living expenses, right? Uh, you, yours might be much lower. You might be able, depending on where you live, to maybe uh, live on four to five thousand dollars per month. That's absolutely doable. Uh, you might live somewhere. If you live in California, you you might not be able to live on on ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollars per month. Anyhow, so therefore, uh, make sure that you budget for your living expenses and then see if you can trade for a living. If you can't trade for a living just yet, trade for growth. Yeah, grow your account. Anyhow, hey, um, hope that this helped here. If it did, do me a favor and share this video with others uh, who might find this helpful. If this was your first time here and you would like to stay updated on my account and uh, also the trading strategies that I use, then click on subscribe, hit the little notification bell because this way you get notified whenever I release a new video. And I will see you very, very soon. I'm actually doing a daily market update and I'm doing this in 45 minutes from now. So if you can't get enough 
of me, uh, then watch this in, uh, in 45 minutes. It's at five o'clock uh, Eastern. And it's only five minutes because I'm just telling you what happened in the markets today. If you're interested in this, again, click on subscribe, click on like, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Have a great rest of the afternoon. Next video on Thursday. Okay, take care.